Kurudani. A national, regional and international digital presence backed by the most experienced and top-notch broadcast professionals in the industry. A very good evening to you. The New Look Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is truly ahead of the pack. Turn to the mother of broadcasting in Kenya for stories that resonate with our identity, our aspirations as a people united in purpose. Real stories of hard work, of passion, of creativity, of big dreams. Stories that cement our nationhood. Stories that bring us together as one. We take pride in our shared heritage and destiny. KBC. Informing, educating and entertaining Kenyans as one nation. KBC. Kenya's listening. Kenya's watching. machine yangu naitwa Eric kama unaweza nita mogaka mimi ni socha kasi yangu e, ni kuchunga mali ya wenyewe hakuna kitu uko uchungu sana kama mtu kupotesa especially pesa ameweka kwa nyumba ama ofisini na hizo kesi ukuwa ngumu sana kufuatiliwa na waomba wenzangu eh? kama vile mimi ufanya weka pesa yako kwa panga account juu KDIC imekuwa kikisia iko safe weka kitu kwa panga Be sure check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall KDIC protecting your deposits Well, a good evening to you. Great thanks for joining us here watching a Sunday Express. Now tonight, there's pain in the bookshops because parents are crying over the prices of new books, new uniforms. And the people who have been selling uniforms are also crying. The problem is schools have changed school uniforms arbitrarily. We have that story lined up for you, including the politics of the day, because this is Sunday Express. Indeed, it is Sunday Express. Are you on board? If not, we invite you. Welcome as we kickstart this broadcast. You will be understanding what has been shaping the news uh, since morning till now. A lot lined up for you. Plus, we'll be talking about nutrition for children, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. What is essential? What is it that can help you as a parent, as a caregiver, to boost your child's immunity during these trying times? That conversation coming much later in the course of this particular broadcast. All right. But first things first, let's have a look at the highlights and then we begin the journey officially. It is just struggling that we get uniform, we get whatever that is required for our children to go back to school comfortably. Lutam New Baden. Parents lament high cost of school items as sellers decry dead stock. Defeating William Ruto 
is my number one priority. Yes. Ati mpango yao yote ni kushindana Naruto. Mimi nataka niwaambie hawa marafiki, tafuteni agenda. Tafuteni plan. Sisi tuko tayari. It is not about me. Deputy President William Ruto hit back at Wipe leader Kalonzo Musyoka. Let the community without corruption, without intimidation, without pushing them to the wall, decide whom they want. Negotiated democracy in Mandera County. We bring you the initial stage where the elders are involved. And on day three of the Tokyo Olympics, Team Kenya suffers a setback in women's volleyball and boxing. All right, welcome on board and thank you so much for creating time for us tonight. My name is Safina Cheng Oma and our sign language interpreter is Byron Abuli. And my name is John Jacob Kerio. Welcome to the broadcast. And we begin uh, with the reopening of schools and they, as they reopen for the first time this Monday, a section of businessmen uh, dealing with school uniforms in the Nairobi Central Business District are stuck with a dead stock following what they claimed as an arbitrary change of school uniform by some schools. This even as parents declare cried high prices of school items saying that they are already financially emaciated following the harsh economic times occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. Timothy Kipnusu begins our bulletin tonight. It was a beehive of activities in Nairobi Central Business Sunday as parents and guardians made the last minute back to school shopping rush. School uniforms and textbook outlets were the epicenter of the shopping spree. But the high cost of school items, especially for parents with Form 1 joining students, was quite a nightmare. It is just struggling that we get uniform, we get whatever that is required for our children to go back to school comfortably. This even as a section of traders revealed that they have made huge losses due to the frequent change of school uniform by a section of teachers. We are just wondering what does the school uniform have to do with the school? If you found the school uniform in that school, does it have an issue with the education? So we are just appealing to the government to stop these head teachers from changing the school uniform. Because if you change the school uniform, what happens to us who are selling these uniforms in the shops? It becomes dead stock. In business, business, COVID, it may affect sana bad business. Some retailers citing frustrations from all sellers who they say play cat and mouse game by selling their products to specific retailers. It's really challenging, especially the whole of this week. All sellers have closed uh, their front doors, they are selling at the back. Orders they took a long time ago for other retailers and wholesalers from other places. <laughs> This even as Matatu operators ruled out hiking the affairs as the learners resume classes this Monday. The teacher service commission will this Monday hold a stakeholders forum on teacher preparedness for the full reopening of schools in 2021 academic calendar year. The schools reopens for the first term from this Monday 26 July to 1st October. Term 2 begins from 11th October to 23rd December, while the third term starts on 3rd January to 4th March. The national exams are set to begin immediately after the end of the 2021 academic calendar. Now still staying with matters education, the 2020 Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education candidates who applied for placement to local universities and colleges will know their fate by mid-August following the conclusion of the revision of choices. The Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service says this coming Monday it will embark on the final phase of the selection exercise expected to be completed in less than a month. Purity Museo reports. 
In a statement dated Sunday the 25th of July 2021, Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Service, KUCCPS, has expressed confidence that all 2020 KCSE candidates who made applications for placement to institutions of higher learning will know their fate in three weeks. KUCCPS officials say they are keen on concluding the process and releasing the outcome to all applicants by mid-August 2021. The application and revision of choices that was in its third and final round was scheduled to close on July 17, 2021, but KUCCPS granted a week's extension to mobilize more applicants and ensure no eligible candidate was left behind. According to the body responsible for the selection of students for government sponsorship to universities and colleges, a total of 4,359 candidates took advantage of the extension and revised their degree choices, bringing to over 90% of all candidates who qualified for degree courses. KUCCPS said it also targeted secondary school graduates with any mean grade from the year 2000 to 2020 for placement and government sponsorship to TVET institutions. Purity Museo, Sunday Express. From uh, education to some politics now, and Deputy President William Ruto has hit back at Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka on his assertions that his priority was to defeat him in the 2022 general election, saying that that was inconsequential. Ruto saying he has already put open his agenda to the public on improving the economy of the nation through the bottom-up approach and urged the Waipa leader to instead preach politics of prosperity. Defeating William Ruto is my number one priority. Yes. And I have reasons for it. And I have reasons for it. Moments after the Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka said his priority will be to defeat Deputy President William Ruto in 2022 presidential election, Ruto has taken a swipe at NASA for putting their efforts on how to nail him politically rather than coming up with ideas to improve the country's economy. At ni kushindana na Ruto. Mimi nataka niwaambie hawa marafiki tafadhali nawaambia kwa kuwapatia mawaidha. Tafuteni agenda. Ruto warning his opponents that they will face the same fate they faced in 2017 if they do not put their priorities right. Lakini mkizunguka zunguka vile mnazunguka mwisho mtaenda kujiapisha Pale vile ule mungine alijiapisha siku hiyo ingine wakati tumewashinda. Well, Amani National Congress leader Musalia Mudavadi has cautioned Kenyans against being divided on ethnic or social class line. Bimi luza sera zangu, uzipende kumpatia kura. Tako mungina takuja nawe na sera zaidi, amanzuli zaidi, auza zake na hini. Lakini tujue kwamba, tusipeane ahadi za uongo kwa manaishi kwa Kenya. He said no Kenyan should be victimized for exercising his democratic right to elect a leader of his choice. This as Garissa Township MP Adan Dwale has opposed calls to postpone August 2022 general election. The only option that the, cons that the election can be postponed, that is in the constitution, is in, the, in case this country goes to war with another country. Suleiman Yeri, Sunday Express. Let's continue with the breadth of politics but in a different line because residents of Mandera County have decided to follow a different path in choosing candidates for various elective positions in the county. The process involves elders who hold public barazas for four days to identify their aspirants in a negotiated democracy. This is the first stage of the process which will culminate in a grand conference in August this year in Takaba constituency in Mandera County. According to the elders, the process helps reduce political temperatures by creating cohesion and harmony as well as reducing uh, expenses and as our reporter Adam Ibrahim found out there are some who see the process as a waste of time questioning its credibility Adam's story has been voiced by Suleiman Yeri have a look it is almost a year to the 2022 general election aspirants of various selective positions are currently busy weighing the electorate as the big day beacons 
But in Mandera County, things have been different since the 2013 election. Here, they apply what they term as negotiated democracy. Elders do decide, people come to the seat and negotiate and share positions. And uh, I, I feel it should be emulated across, uh, across Kenya. Negotiated democracy refers to a process of agreeing on how to distribute political positions in advance of an election. This is what it may travel all the way from Nairobi. We may travel to Kambali Mbali Sana. Ili to Elewane, this is community, to let them to Moja Mbai in a community. The elders, who mostly are at their 80s, have converged under this tree and will be here for four days. The 80-year-old person is in a better position to advise the youth. We see them as pool of knowledge. When the elders speak, everyone has to listen. After all, they command respect in this region. Whoever is picked at this stage goes up to the last level of endorsement and is likely to be endorsed. It is different level subsets of the community that decides. The lower level will push you to an upward level endorsement. Huyu mtu lazima amesoma, anaweza elewa county budget yake, anaweza kufanya watu inclusive, anaweza fanya justice, lazima tuangalie hizi zote kwanza. Ya pili, huyu jamaa alifanya nini mbeleni? However, the process has its side effects with those opposed to it, terming it as a political conmanship. With the elders are a section of professionals, politicians, religious and youth leaders. The elders say negotiated democracy system facilitates equitable sharing of positions and reduce political temperatures witnessed before and after general elections. It is the only way. It brings cohesion, peace, sustainable peace actually. So we request them to agree in one way so that Moja achukwe hiyo kiti. Awezi awezi kwa wawili wa kwa president stop dividing us along lines. That will not help Kenya. Let everybody peacefully sell his policy and let the community without corruption, without intimidation, without pushing them to the wall decide whom they want. <laughs> In 2017, a section of elected leaders including Mandera Governor Captain Ali Roba thrashed a lineup recommended through the negotiated democracy system. Roba uh, was the first beneficiary of negotiated, negotiated democracy and indeed from my assessment he has moved us from zero level to somewhere. As long as the objective is one, the objective is for the betterment of this community. If our aim and objective is all to make sure that uh, we need, our, to, we need uh, to have a, a, a development for our community, then whether you are a technocrat, whether you are a, a, a sheikh, that major objective of is what is there in for this community. The Council of Elders meeting sets the stage for other processes which will culminate to a grand conference in August this year where the final lineup will be unveiled. Right away from that, let me bring you up to speed with the COVID-19 numbers in the country. As at Sunday, Kenya recorded 664 new cases of COVID-19 from a sample size of 5,432. This translates to a 12.2% positivity rate. The new figures bring to 197,409 confirmed positive cases. The Ministry of Health says 16 more people have succumbed to the disease, bringing cumulative death toll to 3,865. This as 201 patients recovered from the virus in the past 24 hours. Globally, 193,899,503 people have cumulatively tested positive for the virus, with the death toll standing at 4,155,400 ,004 and one worldwide.
All right, remember still in this broadcast, we are going to be talking about something very important. Are you a parent? Are you a caregiver? And you're passionate about advancing the growth and development of your child? Then you need to know what to feed them. We are going to be having that conversation with my guest on the other side of the break, Lillian Dutambu, the clinical nutritionist. She's already in studio with us to help us understand especially what you need to be feeding your child during this COVID-19 pandemic to boost their immunity. That coming up after this break. Stay with us. Mubeberu alikuja katika Kenya Ye hakukuja Kwa kutawala sisi peke yake Unadhani ye alikuja kwa ajili ya kutawala sisi He eh? Ye alikuja kwa nini Ati ye alipata kama mali Mali Chakula inaja hafa Ndiyo ye alikuja hafa <laughs> Na ye alijua Kama nakuja kurogota chakula peke yake Tunaweza kufukuza ye kama pana hiko hili ngufu Ngufu ya bunduki ambaye atatetemesha roho yako tena wewe unakwenda kanga tena wewe unawachia ye ye ana anaendelea kuchukua kuchukua hii tu ye alikuja kwa mali Kwa machine yangu naitwa Eric ama unaweza niita Mogaka Mimi ni Socha Kasi yangu e, ni kuchunga mali ya wenyewe Hakuna kitu kwa uchungu sana Kama mtu kupotesa especially pesa ameweka kwa nyumba ama ofisini Na hizo kesi ukuwa ngumu sana kufuatiliwa na waomba wenzangu eh? kama vile mimi ufanya weka pesa yako kwa panga account juu KDIC imekuwa kikisia iko safe weka kitu kwa pang Be sure check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall KDIC protecting your deposits Hey Haya Motorish Ala Nissan Serena ndio hii na unaweza kuwa wewe ndio tunapikia simu kodi ya Nissan Serena ni NS Alafu kisha kwenye amount ni 50 bob. Hii Nissan Serena tunakupatia na shilingi 50. Kujiunga na Quick Bid ni rahisi. Enda kwenye Mpesa, bonyeza Paybill kisha weka business number 4032353. Kwenye account weka kodi ya bidhaa unayotaka na bid yako ya chini zaidi. Kwa mfano TV16. Kisha weka shilingi 20 tu kama idadi yako. Weka bid yako pia kwenye www.quickbid.co.ke. Kumbuka, bid ya chini zaidi ya kipekee ndio ununua. Quick Bid Zabora kwa bei ya chini. Silly girl, listen to me. You have to take the birthing charm with you. Just look at your knee. He's tall and strong because of it. She was your responsibility. I asked you to take good care of her while I was gone. You just let her go? How did you run away? I had to go out or I'm going to go crazy. Right. He asked me to tell you when you're bored you can play with them just to kill time. Thank you so much and pass my gratitude to the crown prince. And it's time for us to have that very important conversation we have been telling you. Today we want to talk about uh, nutrition and children. I know that when we think about nutrition, we all think about the basics, the carbohydrates, the vitamins, the minerals, the fats, and the proteins. But what many do not know is the principles that guide uh, the nutrition for children vis-a-vis -vis the nutrition for adults. And of course, even coming in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, 
how should you change your meal plan? What is it that you're supposed to ensure as a parent or a caregiver that your child actually consumes or have as, as a portion in their meal plan? Why is this important? Why should we be having it in our meal plans? That is one thing we want to talk about right here, just to understand nutrition for children, especially in the COVID-19 season. Tonight, I'm engaging a nutritionist. Her name is Lillian Duta Mbudhia. Thank you so much, Lillian, for creating time for us. Okay, it's it's a topic that is quite timely for you, I believe, right mm -hmm. now. And okay. I just want you to take us through the basics. I would say this is nutrition sort of 101 yeah, for okay. parents who could be <laughs> battling and dealing with, with this whole issue of mm -hmm. trying to ensure that their babies are not just fed, but they are, they are fed properly, sure. if I may use that term. So yes. on a general perspective, I just mm -hmm. want us to understand, because we want to know the principles of nutrition for children, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. in terms of carbs, in terms of... Uh, all the essentials that are needed in a, in a balanced diet what should guide how much is given to the child just you can take us through uh, them just very quickly as we begin okay so as she said my name is Lilian Duta I'm a, I'm a clinical nutritionist I put back with an organization called Hosan Nutrition and Wellness Solutions and basically anytime we look at uh, nutrition for children, we look at the principles of nutrition, especially at a time like now whereby food we thought that is a common thing to many, it's not. Okay, so many households have been affected, especially by COVID-19. And so we stick to the basics. And the basics here I'm looking at balance. So balance in this case I'm looking at the nutrients that are usually found in foods. This I'm talking about carbs. I'm talking about protein. I'm talking about fats. I'm talking about fruits. I'm talking about vegetables and the dairy. So food is not just food. It's not just food. <laughs> you also have to look at what yes, makes up that what food. what makes up that food. Okay. Yes, because each of these nutrients has its own function in the body. And you cannot overlook or say, I will not eat this because uh, I think any time I, I eat maybe the things that I like, must, uh, most of the time will end up now being malnourished. And in this case, we'll end up having deficiencies of a particular nutrient. And by then, the deficiencies are so high, and then it starts showing as symptoms mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. So somebody may think they are sick, and in the real sense, they are actually suffering from deficiencies. Mm -hmm. yes. I want you to put this in the context of the child's well-being. Why is it important to have those different components? What is mm -hmm. the role and function of each? And maybe as you do that, mm -hmm. you can take us through ideas probably on some of the options that parents could explore in terms of carbs, vitamins, veggies. True, yeah. true. So for children, this is very, very important because they're undergoing growth and development. So in this case, they need all the nutrients in in um, enough quantities so that now each and every part of their development is catered for and also their growth. So I'm looking at in terms of carbs, don't just think about the staple foods we have. We are lucky we live in the tropics and, uh, and it's a fortunate thing that um, the economy of Kenya is uh, they primarily started as an agricultural economy so that means we have access to food and from either the markets or directly from the chambers so in this case we have a variety of, of foods that if you just know how to classify these foods then you are all going to get it right so for example I'm talking about carbs not only a staple ugali then we also have things like uh, uh, the sweet potato, the potatoes themselves mm -hmm. as a source of carb, mm -hmm. the rice. In this case, we have um, millet, okay, mm -hmm. being used either to make uji or even ugali, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So here I'm also looking at things like cassava, mm -hmm. yams, mm -hmm. arrowroot, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So whichever form of carb you find, that is also a source of carbohydrates. So it's not saying that if I don't find whatever I'm used to, then I can starve. So it's not no. just ugali every day? No, no, you no, can no. Actually you can actually around. diversify. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. long as you just it know... It even excites the children. That is yeah. it. That mm -hmm. is it. Because if you feed them the same kind of food again, they now become a bit rebellious to it because they get bored. 
right? It's just like an adult. If, if, if I feed you the same kind of food day in, day out, it will reach a time, it doesn't matter how nutritious it is, at the end of the day, you're not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So in this case, variety is also a key principle in nutrition other than balance. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. talk about veggies. Mm -hmm. This is like the biggest nightmare for most parents. Oh, yes. Kids would, would actually prefer proteins mm -hmm. as opposed to to you know, veggies. That, that side has <laughs> veggies. How yes. do you make it exciting uh, for, mm. for a child to, to actually, uh, you know, feel like they, feel they like. want to, to, to consume that as well? Okay, so this is, uh, this is the advice or the tip I usually give to parents. Put the veggies in foods they like best. Okay? If your kid likes fries, can you do your fries and then add your veggies? They'll end up actually eating the whole thing mm. up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even you can use the meat and mince it up, then add the veggies inside, and then you make it into a patty, and then you, you fry it, you give it to them. Mm -hmm. So it's these interesting ways of adding veggies in a tricky way, yeah. but at the end of the day they like it. There are kids who like blended juices, why don't you add the vegetables inside? Mm -hmm. All right, like the carrots, the spinach. Nice, nice. So long as at the end of the day it goes in. It doesn't matter how. How? <laughs> the battle is won. <laughs> as long as it's inside, oh, yes. it's inside oh, the yes. digestive system. Yes, yes. That's your goal. That is it. So okay. if you pair maybe something like a fruit juice with a vegetable, at the end of the day you have covered the vitamins and minerals, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of demystifying the old and uh, usual way of doing things and adapting new and interesting way of doing things right. and actually at the end of the day you get your goal achieved. All right. So especially with children you have to be a bit um, uh, innovative mm. and also be willing to go the extra mile so that they can then enjoy food and also have a good food culture. So they, in this case they, they go for healthy meals as opposed to unhealthy meals. All right. Mm -hmm. I know there's so much we would like to understand concerning the different, you know, components of a healthy, a balanced diet. Yes. But I just want us also, in the interest of some of the concerns, uh, some of the viewers, you know, raised when I said I'm going to be having this conversation concerning the COVID-19 and mm -hmm. the nutritional ne needs for children. Okay. Just take us through what is essential right now. We know we are battling a pandemic True. and children are, hi are as high at risk as any other person in the True. society. Yes. What is it that is essential in terms of the nutritional value? Okay. So in in this case, in the context of COVID-19, we are looking at, one, the energy requirement of the child. They are very active. That means their energy requirement is even higher sometimes than us adults. All right? So if you don't end up even meeting half of it, so that means this child will always be operating on a negative. Mm -hmm. And that ends up now being, the, the time now they are getting sick, mm -hmm. it actually gets them actually very low and the recovery period takes longer. The other thing that we look at is protein, in this case for the immune system. All right. Yeah. So protein in this, as much as they like it, and it is good because especially for meat and plant protein, all right mm -hmm. we have to do both you, you have cannot, to balance between you have to balance both the animal exactly proteins. because there are vitamins which are found in in animal protein that are not found in plant protein and therefore if you just uh, say that uh, my kid doesn't take animal then also look for another alternative either by supplementing the vitamins actually important for the immune system mm -hmm. that are actually found in plant protein mm -hmm. that uh, nini, but only found in in plant protein and not in animal protein. Okay. So here I'm looking at things like um, the protein itself plus also vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamin B6, C and E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is these are very good antioxidants. What I mean is these are components that once you consume them, they actually arrest any foreign body that gets into mm -hmm. your system either by inhaling or by eating all right all i right. like i like how this is going i just want us to stay on the covid 19 mm -hmm. uh, spectrum a little yes. bit um right now we are in a very trying time yes especially in terms of the ability for parents and caregivers to be able to ad actually meet all these nutritional needs for children yes, yes. um mm, people have been laid off there are businesses that are not doing so mm -hmm. well there is mm -hmm. this big economic downturn mm -hmm. that the, 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 the entire globe is currently facing so how do you ensure that you survive and cope and you actually meet meet this at the middle 
Okay. As a, are there cheaper options perhaps that we can explore? Yes, there are. Yeah. Yes, there are. So maybe you are, you are used to a certain way of eating, but then due to the economic strength being affected, some changes are, are definitely inevitable. So in this case, this is what I always recommend, is people to diversify in terms of sources of nutrition. Mm -hmm. So if you are only used maybe to eating chicken all the time, can you also look at fish? Mm -hmm. And there's also different forms of even fish that is actually affordable even to the lower levels of mm -hmm. the economic levels, mm -hmm. okay? So in this case, I'm looking at um, different sources of nutrition that are easily available depending on your economic strength. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Going that is one of it. The other thing is, um, is about uh, home gardening, okay. okay? So other than just buying all the time, so long as you have a piece of uh, a piece of land or even space just around your house, take advantage of it and actually do some home gardening. The Ministry of Agriculture currently is actually encouraging many families, especially mm -hmm. in the urban areas, to do urban gardening. Mm -hmm. So we have a veranda. Where you get the space? <laughs> they, no. So long as you have a veranda, mm -hmm. there are different methods of actually doing this within a very small space. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And therefore it ends up supplementing the what? The dish. So that is uh, uh, at least way um, better and cheaper because then you're not forced to always buy foods. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. The other way is also to learn how to preserve foods. In case you have a surplus, maybe you went to the rural areas, you had a piece of land, you harvested some, a lot mm -hmm. of food, then there are different ways of preserving foods. And this is also uh, the main methods that I also teach mm -hmm. uh, majority of my clients what to do at home so that you avoid food wastage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Exactly. This is not the time for you, no, to, you this need is to not save the, you need anything, to save that, you anything that comes to the home. Time. Yes. I feel like it's a topic that really needs us to go deep into and understand more but unfortunately because of time we cannot be able to continue. Just as your final word, mm -hmm. um, what is it that you feel um, can be done beyond just the family setup are there policies or perhaps something that the government can do also because there are people who cannot really even afford even yeah, a true, meal true. or even two, three meals like mm -hmm. they used to before covid yes. what can be done to cushion such families in terms of the, their nutritional needs okay so this is the approach whereby i even infer from the community also not only the government so from the government point of view they can actually subsidize some of the food products from the main markets that is the supermarkets and also the 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 main food markets okay mm -hmm. so that in this case they give farmer subsidized uh, input and therefore the food production is increased and it becomes cheaper even to anyone the other thing that we can also do for the community also is to come out and support especially schools and churches anywhere where people will gather at any one given time of the week you can come up with a program whereby the the core people are able or the leaders are able to mobilize the people to come and actually have a meal and in the process maybe like in school the kids continue to go to school because there is food mm -hmm. and so long as they are they are nourished then they are able to concentrate in mm -hmm. class and actually attend the class in this yeah. case so in, it helps even their parents at least to send them to school mm -hmm. and at the same time they are also able to save some few coins or, some, or whatever they can be able to afford then they can be able to present uh, their families with food mm -hmm. at least three yeah. times it's good that you say that the school feeding programs actually yes. really help yeah. uh, these vulnerable families True. not only to send the encourage parents to send their kids to school but to keep them there to as keep well, them there to too. keep them there yes. and actually contributes to the education outcomes and that health outcomes. It. If that they feed it. properly, then that even the it. learning outcomes yes. are positive. Yes. Thank you for creating time for us tonight. Indeed. So many questions coming through. Of course, we will definitely have you <laughs> on board one of these days again, just to All pick right. it up from where we've left, because it's a crucial topic. Child nutrition, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. I've been engaging Lilian Dutambuthia, a clinical nutritionist on this particular subject. Thank you so much for watching. There's still more coming up on the other side of the break. Do stay with us.
Kwa machine yangu naitwa Eric. Kama unaweza nita mogaka. Mimi ni socha. Kasi yangu e, ni kuchunga mali ya wenyewe. Hakuna kitu uko uchungu sana. Kama mtu kupotesa, especially pesa ameweka kwa nyumba ama ofisini. Na hizo kesi ukuwa ngumu sana kufuatiliwa na waomba wenzangu, eh? Kama vile mimi ufanya, weka pesa yako kwa panga account juu KDIC imekuhakikishia iko safe, weka kitu kwa panga. Be sure check out for a KDIC sticker in your banking hall. KDIC protecting your deposits. Get the VIP access to the best shows on KBC Channel 1. We have something different, something special to spice you up. Get ready for new, exciting and captivating dramas. <laughs> Movies. I love the smell. Comedy. I went to the popos. <laughs> Drama. Will you assault the queen in my house, in my presence? <laughs> News, sports, and so much more. Do the things that make you happy on KBC Channel One. Oh, <laughs> Kwa hivyo umeamua pili ndio atakwamrithi wako. Naona hiyo pilipili itakwasha mpaka utosini. Mimi sio mtu tokoko sitishiki kwa maneno. Mtu hezi mnaumu kwa mkusa kimu. No, no, no. That is impossible. Kuna siku ushai niona ni kibebo atakataka na nagari lampu. Ewe. Kwa hivyo mzee amekuwa takataka. Wataka nini? Welcome back. You're watching Sunday Express. A bit of an apology because when uh, on our segment from the archives, the voice or that uh, clip you saw of uh, the first vice president of the Republic of Kenya, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, was captioned as a first president. But of course, you already know the first president of the Republic of Kenya was Jomo Kenyatta, and Jaramogi Oginga Odinga was his first vice president. But moving on, a group of community leaders in Madari constituency in Nairobi County have devised a fun activity filled approach to sensitize adolescent girls about the perils of teenage pregnancy. Our reporter Masi Joki spent an afternoon in Mlango Kubo area and filed the following report. Saturday afternoon at Mlango Kubo grounds in Madari constituency in Nairobi County. <laughs> A group of girls are raising dust in a football tournament. Yeah! True Colors, Slam Soccer, Young Ladies, Bill Gates and Youngsters are the teams battling for top honors in a friendly match and in the end, True Colors emerges the winner. Most of the girls through COVID, eh? That is early pregnancy in English. Eh? And then, Kuna uh, history, one English of it was as if I'm back at drugs. The championship is not part of any competitive league, but rather a platform for bringing together adolescent girls from the informal settlement to educate them on the dangers of engaging in sexual relations. Sport Kamai, Minister of Sports, Nikitu in Azakuja is support. Mimi uh, na natuma ujumbe wangu ka, kwa mheshimiwa Amina Mohamed vitu kama hii ikifanyika hapa kwa ground kwa kweli itasaidia wasichana watoto wasichana Through the sensitization program initiated by community leaders the girls aged between 15 to 20 also receive academic mentorship and education on menstrual hygiene I'll actually encourage that other parts of Madare uh, Kibera each and every places 
they should embrace such things, such initiatives. And you will get that we have changed our community in a very positive and a very wonderful way. Iko wakati walikuwa na ile occasion yao, wakasema, let, 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 let the girl play the ball, but not to carry the ball. Kenyan teens living in such informal settlements are prone to be victims of early pregnancies due to poverty and illiteracy, thus exposing them to sexual relations. And this initiative, organized by Madare Ambitious Leaders, will ensure that early pregnancies are reduced. Masin Joki, Sunday Express. Indeed, great reporting there, Masinjo. Key interesting story. Now, moving on, in October last year, as the country and the world grappled with the COVID-19 pandemic, one family in Nairobi's Tena Estate was dealing with a serious medical condition that was threatening the life of their baby boy. Baby Jones Baraka had been diagnosed with a rare genetic liver disease, and the family embarked on the journey of fundraising to realize 5 million shillings required for treatment abroad. Fast forward to July 20. 2021, Master Jones Baraka, who is now one year, 10 months old, is on the road to recovery thanks to intervention from well wishers. Ben Troinjue with a story. This is baby Baraka, full of life and so bubbly. But nine months ago, baby's Baraka situation was critical and life threatening. But thanks to family, friends, and you, the viewer, Baby Baraka now has a new lease of life. Here is Baby Baraka's story. A family in Nairobi is appealing to well-wishers to help them raise 5 million shillings to enable their one-year-old son undergo a liver transplant in India. On Saturday, October 31st, 2020, Habel Mwangi and his wife Lydia Anyango were featured on KBC Channel 1 News making a passionate appeal for funds to facilitate the treatment of their son Jones Baraka who was ailing from Alagael syndrome and required urgent liver transplant. India transplant. So from then Eight months later, <laughs> and after going through many challenges, the family based in Nairobi is back to share the joy and thank Kenyans for coming to their aid of their baby. I communicated to KBC Channel 1 via uh, Messenger. Facebook and then they they replied my message and they, they gave me appointment we managed to raise around 1.8 million by but within two two to three weeks Kenyans are real givers huh? Kenyans actually guy I can't I can't explain the feeling we paid all the bill huh? and we managed to pay the flight we managed to buy medication worth 200,000 Kenyan shillings huh? For a whole year, it was the Kenyan spirits. Wali to Saidia Kabisa Kabisa Kabisa. And we thank each and every one of you who came through for us, for baby Baraka. Baraka and his parents returned home after four months in India. Saizi hata kukula, unaona tunakula tu vizuri peke etu. Yani he can hold something like... Niseme tu ako tu normal kabisa kama watoto wengine na ame catch up na milestones da zake ame catch up na growth like ukimwona na kids of his, his age ako completely okay as his recovery journey continues the family has set up an organization to help others we came up with this organization called uh, live a life for children at least to find other parents who are going through the same situation we are going through at least now we are in the right position we can advise them we can tell them what we've gone through we can share our our our, our problems for sunday express i'm ben troy and indeed, as the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, that he who shows graciousness and kindness to the poor loans the Lord.
Wonderful. Let's move forward to the section of traders in the newly rehabilitated Nairobi City Park markets have complained of unfair treatment in the allocation of the market stalls. Elsewhere, a section of the elderly in Busia County has fallen victim to conmen who extort money while promising to register them to the government's cash transfer program for the elderly. These are more stories in our county news roundup. Months of operating in the open and unfavorable environment, traders at the Nairobi city market are finally relocated to the newly rehabilitated and modern market. The over 600 traders have however expressed their dissatisfaction in the manner in which stalls at the new market have been allocated. <laughs> So when the inani liko inafanyiwa kuchaguliwa kwa semekana mi my dad owns the store here lakin unfortunately ni era nikapata paka babangu mwenyewe hana and leadership row at the pentecostal assemblies of god church continued to deepen as a section of the church members accused the church general superintendent Patrick Lihanda of fueling division in the church by installing leaders not recognized by the church despite a court ruling kanisa la pg tumechoka tunaomba kesi ambayo iko kotini wiki hii ya kesho eko judge chukua nafasi ya kwanza kuhakikisha kwamba umemaliza hayo mambo Elsewhere in Nambale constituency Busia County it has emerged that a section of the elderly has fallen victim to conmen who extort money while promising to register them to benefit from the elderly fund among the victims is Mama Sara Nekesa who has lost thousands of shillings to the conmen and has never qualified to benefit from the elderly fund Nimejaribu kuandika nimejaribu siji mara nne sikuli pesa na wengine wanatembelea nyumbani Meanwhile, state funded vulnerable groups in Kisi County have been warned against diversion or misappropriation of the money allocated to them on annual basis. Finally, in Narok County, Punyua Lemayana has been elected as the new chairman of the Narok Boda Boda Operator Association in a hotly contested election that was held at the William Olentimama Stadium. This is the county government of Narok. We have to look at the people who are in Boda Boda in the city. This is the town of the city of town, and the city of the parking area of the town is being congested. All right, a lot you are saying on social media. Thank you for creating time for us. Mm -hmm. Ruth, Peter, Lazaro, you're watching us from the Western Kenya. Thank you so much for your comments. You're liking the conversation that we had earlier with my guest on child nutrition mm -hmm. and the tip on how to mix the veggies inside the favorite food <laughs> that the child likes. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Ruth, for creating time. Charles Ogutu from Eldoret, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. We'll be sampling more views as we continue. All right, it's time for us to take a breather. When we come back, it'll be time for sports. Don't go too far. all began. As the mother of broadcasting in Kenya, you can trust KBC to bring you authentic news and programs to your living room. As KBC, we take pride in our unrivaled heritage as Kenya's trusted national broadcaster. Commanding over 92% digital television signal coverage of our country, 23 radio services that cut across our entire language spectrum, a national, regional and international digital presence backed by the most experienced and top-notch broadcast professionals in the industry. A very good evening to you. The New Look Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is truly ahead of the pack. Turn to the mother of broadcasting in Kenya for stories that resonate with our identity, our aspirations as a people united in purpose. Real stories of hard work, of passion, of creativity, of big dreams. Stories that cement our nationhood. Stories that bring us together as one. Well. 
We take pride in our shared heritage and destiny. KBC. Informing, educating and entertaining Kenyans as one nation. KBC. Kenya's listening. Kenya's watching. Quiero amarte de una forma diferente, de otro modo. For some reason, Lucretia hasn't tried to kill me. I don't know. Maybe it's because she still needs me to get whatever it is she wants. Well, she once mentioned to me, what happens if you overdose on potassium? I researched, and I found that it's perfect for my plan for your father. Yeah, I won't go anywhere. Hurry, don't take too long. Uh, uh yes. Huh? De una forma diferente, de otro modo, nunca igual al de otra gente. Time for sports now. In national women volleyball team, Alkia Strikers started the Olympic Games campaign with a loss to host Japan in their Group A match opener after losing by three straight sets. The team will next be in action this Tuesday when it will face Korea. The host claimed a 25-15 win in the first set before winning 25-11 in the second. The Kenyan team was unlucky and lost the third set by 25-23. <laughs> mzuri sana kwa kwa sababu mara yangu ya kwanza kupata timu ya Japan kama level yao haiko uh, vile nilikuwa nafikiria uh, lakini hii ni kawaida hii kitu kidogo kidogo tume make like a killing the ball to key attack at ui and then kitu kingine ni ile leak blocks ni kwenda leak kidogo but from tomorrow naenda kwa kunit I learned a lot kutokana na hiyo team vile tumecheza nayo and I'm really appreciating my team. Tu kitu tumebakisha ni ile killing. Na hiyo killing tunakuanga nayo lakini for now ni kama imepotea kidogo. Malkia who are featuring in the Olympic Games for the second time will next face Korea in their group campaign on Tuesday before facing Serbia, Dominican Republic and Brazil. <laughs> Frederick Muki for Sunday Express. Still in the Olympics, Kenya registered yet another disappointing result today at the ongoing Tokyo Olympic Games after a boxer Christian Ongare was eliminated in the competition. Ongare was beaten by Irish Magnu of Philippines in the round of 32 of the women's uh, uh, flyweight division at the Kokogi Gan Arena in Japan. Really nice work again from Magno. In the, back. the Filipino boxer scored a unanimous decision win against Ongari with four of the five judges scoring 30 27 in favor of the Filipino pug. One judge gave a 30 26 score for Magno. It was a disappointing experience for the Kenyan boxing team after captain Nico Koth bowed out of the championship earlier. <laughs> So at least when BFK imeshikilia ingekuwa ilishikilia hapo nyuma do the more exposure do the more unakuwa po alafu pia sasa hizi i believe wanaenda na hizo ma rankings Olympic finals So what tuna need ni kuwa na mashindano mengi sana Tunaelewa kwamba Covid ime affect sana mambo ya mashindano haswa sisi eh, Afrika tumeacha kuwa na michezo eh, Frederick Muki for Sunday Express.
And the two Kenyan swimmers, Danilo Rustafiu and Emily Muteti, will dive into the Tokyo Aquatic Center next week. Rustafiu competing in hit two of the 100 meters freestyle on Tuesday, while Muteti will start her competition in hit six of the 50 meters freestyle on Friday. The two are the only swimmers representing Kenya at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. The swimming competitions at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics are already underway, but the two Kenyan swimmers will start their medal hunt this coming week. Danilo Rosafio competing in the 100 meters freestyle event, while Emily Muteti, the 50 meters freestyle event. International Swimming Federation FINA confirmed the duo selection for the Olympics based on their top ranking point selection system. Rosafio earned the needed points after he got the top 730 FINA points. In the 100 meter freestyle at the 2019 FINA World Junior Championship in Budapest, Hungary. I'd say the same target as when I go into any meet. I come to improve my time, you know, make the most of my time here, learn from the experiences, and yeah, hopefully make, make my country proud, you know. That's, that's what I want to do. Muteti, who is based in the United States, qualified due to her exemplary performance at the 2019 Africa Games in Casablanca, Morocco, where she achieved the top 698 FINA points in the 50-meter freestyle. The two have been training ahead of their competitions on Tuesday and Friday. And journalists expected to cover the world under 20 championships have been urged to remain professional while discharging their duties in order to market Kenya, which will host the global event. The event will be held in Nairobi between August 17th to 22nd, and Kenya is expected to defend the title won in 2018 in Tampere, Finland. As the World Under-20 Championship draws nearer, up to 100 local and international journalists are expected to cover the event, which is being held in Nairobi for the first time between August 17th to 22nd, and Kenya is expected to defend the title won in 2018 in Tampere, Finland. According to the World Under-20 Championship Media Broadcast and Communication Director Alex Kobia, journalists are required to remain professional while discharging their duties, to market this country and that through good reports of high profile events, a country gains more chances to host international tournaments. Kobia spoke at a two day training session for journalists in Naivasha, adding that the accreditation process is already ongoing. There will be more trainings for journalists in Mombasa and Nairobi regions before the start of the event to bring the media personalities up to speed with the protocols and guidelines that need to be followed, especially with the COVID 19 situation. And finally, KCB collected maximum points in a bid to keep league title hope alive after a 3-0 win against Karyobangi Sharks in their football Kenya Federation FKF Premier League Round 28 match that was played today at Thika Stadium. Uh, KCB opened the scores through Samuel Mwangi before adding a second through Eric Badi, who scored a penalty while Michael Oduor sealed the scores after netting in the at the 58th minute. In other results, Viga netted 1-0 against Western Steamer. Um, uh, Poster Rangers lost 1-0 to Bandari. Homeboys 1-2-1 against Sofa Parker. Wazito FC claimed a 2-1 win over Matari United, while AFC Leopards settled for a 2-0 draw with Nzoya Sugar. It's time for us <laughs> to put a couple on Sunday Express and thank you very much for your company. I'm sure you have a few messages. No, okay, just, just one from Pius for oh. Yugi. Uh -huh. He wanted to know how to treat ringworms uh -huh. on children. Oh. Yeah, I Apart. believe this is actually something we should be picking up in the near future. But just deworm your child uh, <laughs> with the prescribed 
medication. I believe right. that should do. But we are going to be picking up this conversation in the near future. A lot of issues emanating concerning mm. uh, the wellness of children on social media. Thank you for watching and for sharing your feedback tonight. Mm. We really appreciate that. All right. There's a Jared from Kiambu. We recognize you. Thank you very much again uh, for watching uh, KBC Channel 1 and indeed the Sunday Express. But it's time for us to close. My name is John Jacob Curia. We'll be with you the entire week. Uh, next week, of course, Wednesday and Sunday for Sunday Express. And mm. I believe you too. Yeah, we will. We will. Thank you for the word of encouragement. The scripture, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for doing that for us tonight. Thank you so much, guys, for catching time. We'll be doing this again. My name is Safina Cheng Oma. Our sign language interpreter has been Byron Abuli. Have a good night. College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Thika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks, beauty therapy, makeup, nail technology, spa massages, teaching skills, TOT, solo business management, and many more. Register now and visit our website on www.verabeautycollege.com. You can also call on 0725-923-550 Nairobi Branch, 0728-087-689 Eldoret Branch,